Hey guys, so it is probably about time I made a video talking about the Investigatory Powers Bill uh, that's recently received royal assent here in the UK. It's a bill that massively expands our government's powers of surveillance uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it today. Now I apologise for this video being so UK centric but even if you're not from the UK it might be worth uh, hearing me out here because since this bill has recently passed and it is the most expansive and overreaching bill in regards to civil, civil liberties that um, has ever passed at least in my lifetime you can bet your bottom dollar that other governments even in um, you know Western democracies are going to try and pass something similar now that there is an established legislative framework for doing so which is one of the biggest critiques of this this bill so I'm going to talk a little bit about the bill. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, what you can do to protect yourself from it, but I'll be expanding on that significantly more in the coming weeks on how to protect uh, your privacy online. But today, let's just have a look at the Investigatory Powers Bill and um, and what it actually uh, covers. Now, I'm not going to be covering it expansively here. Uh, there's plenty of literature available. Uh, and it says down here at the bottom uh, a summary of the Investigatory Powers Bill straight from Parliament.uk, which is the official website for the UK Parliament. Uh, and the summarise goes thusly. A bill to make provision about the interception of communications, equipment interference and the acquisition and retention of communications data, bulk personal data sets and other information. To make provision about the treatment of material held as a result of such interception, equipment interference or acquisition of, or, or retention. To establish the Investigatory Powers Commissioner and other Judicial Commissioners and make provision about them and other oversight arrangements to make further provision about investigatory powers and national security, to amend sections 3 and 5 of the Intelligence Services Act of 1994, and for connected purposes. Um, so yeah, that's pretty telling, even coming from the horse's mouth. Now, uh, here is a nice summary of what it is in layman's terms, uh, and I'll link to all of these articles down in the description below. Web and phoned companies will store records of websites visited by every customer for 12 months for access by police, security services and other public bodies upon issue of a warrant. However, they won't be able to track sites accessed over various VPNs, see the best VPNs list. I don't think that's necessarily true, but I'll get back to that. Security services will be legally empowered to bug computers, and phones upon approval of a warrant, companies will be legally obliged to assist these operations and bypass encryption where possible. So just to cover what I meant by um, uh, sites access over VPNs um, won't be tracked, um, that's probably true, but um, it's also worth bearing in mind that not all VPNs are created equal. Some are significantly better than others. Free VPNs um, have no obligation whatsoever to protect your privacy, so I would advise uh, I would advise against generally using them. Um, and also, part of the bill does cover um, basically allowing governments to break encryption, including using existing vulnerabilities like Heartbleed and so forth uh, to gain access. So, so it is somewhat problematic, although using a VPN is something that I'd advise every British citizen, and in fact, anyone who can really afford it at this stage. It's something that I think should become a little bit more standard in terms of internet use. I think, you know, these are companies that should be white, you know, sort of widespread, should receive widespread support from us. Um, and I think that they're providing a, a particularly useful service. Um, and also as well, because it is not go this is not going to be the first time this happens. This is not going to be restricted entirely to the UK now that the legislative framework has been established. So uh, yeah, get familiar with VPNs is my advice. Um, so this is an article from wired.co.uk um, and again, linked in the description below that, um, that covers a lot, you know, in a little bit more detail some of the aspects to it. This is again, this is the hacking power where it um, outlines that basically if they can break into your phone um, under obviously under under a warrant, um, then that's that's fair game. There is bulk hacking in regards to data sets and web records as well. And also a little bit about how the commissioners are appointed. Basically the investigatory powers commissioner um, will be appointed by Theresa May or whoever the serving Prime Minister is at the time. This is particularly problematic because that means that it's just an arm of the um, of the front bench at that point. So, um, 
so this is a list of public authorities that um, that could very well end up getting access to your data. Um, for some reason, the Metropolitan Police Force, but other local police forces don't appear to be in here. But there is a lot, and there are some interesting um, articles in here. Health and Safety Executive, for example, Food, Sta Food Standards Agency, um, Financial Conduct Authority, uh, NHS Trust and Foundation Trusts in England that provide ambulance services. I think this might be more to do with um, gaining access to medical records and so forth. Uh, I don't even, you know, could this this could very well mean that your medical records could could be uh, again used against you in a lot of ways, quite possibly. Uh, HM Revenue and Customs, because of course the tax man is going to be there. Uh, but there are some like Ministry of Justice, Home Office. Um, the British Transport Police as well, you know, again, very, quite in, quite interesting that they're there. So this isn't just restricted to the likes of GCHQ. This isn't just counter-terrorism at this point. I remember uh, since the turn of the century, um, the big worry about our civil liberties being eroded in the name of counter-terrorism. This isn't in the name of counter-terrorism anymore. This is just in the name of general crime fighting. Um, which is, you know, this is this is this is significantly problematic. But the reason this list is important is because it's long, and I would like you to consider once this, you know, once this bill's passed, once this bill's in effect, once this the data started being collected, how easy do you think it is going to be to add names to this list? You know, it's how how likely do you think it's going to be that the uh, information might leak into other departments and nothing will ever be done about it? How many of these rules do you think will actually end up being broken? Because our government time and time again has shown that if they can get away with it, they will break the law, right? What this seems to be doing more than anything else, right? Even though there's there's judicial authorities and so forth involved, right? You, we have to trust them to abide by those laws that they're making for themselves, and we have to trust those judges that are being appointed by the, by the prime minister themselves. Uh, so, so this, you know, the, the the big problem here is that it just provides the information and the tools to be abused. And also, let's make no mistake, right? Having, you know everyone's uh, internet browsing history stored for 12 months in central locations is a huge security risk. It is massive. Uh, and don't think that it's safe either. I mean, look at the number of hacks that we've seen. Just this week, I saw X Hamster, the porn site got hacked and loads of details um, were leaked about it. Every week, there is seeming, you know, a seemingly big, powerful organization that seems to get hacked. Um, the Ministry of Defense, I believe, has hacked. I think there is, I think JP Morgan Chase have even been hacked. Um, I believe tax offices around the world have been hacked. There is a surprisingly large number of hacks that we don't even hear about from particularly big institutions that have particularly good PR departments. It's, um, it is, you know, it is deeply, deeply concerning that even if, even if this is all as much above board as they say it is, and warrants are always, uh, you know, are, are um, you know, they're considered with weight, which I, I personally don't think that that's likely going to happen. This this process, uh, you know, the government are particularly efficient at streamlining these kind of processes when it suits them. And do they get held to account when they break them? Generally, no, they don't. So how, how are we able to sort of protect ourselves from this? Well, the immediate go-to is to use a VPN. Now, a VPN, for those of you that don't know, is a service that sits on top of your internet connection. So what you're doing is you're getting a remote computer from the um, from your VPN company, uh, and you're surfing the internet through their computer by proxy, as it were. So all of um, so it, and, and it encrypts the traffic from your VPN to you, which means that it basically hides your IP address from any websites you're visiting and any third parties. And um, also a lot of VPNs uh, employ other um, anti-tracking features as well, and it's applied at their end. So it, well, it makes it easier to maintain um, security as well, because you're effectively outsourcing it to your VPN. So over the coming weeks and beyond, I'm going to be talking about some of the VPNs that I'm trying out, but I'm still in the process of, of trying them out. The one that I'm currently on at the moment, which seems to be particularly good, is CyberGhost. CyberGhost um, is Linux friendly, and all of the VPNs I talk about will um, make use of OpenVPN, which is the framework used in all the Linux distributions um, I've used. Um, so CyberGhost available, of course, for all the major platforms here. It's nice and fast as well, um, uh, and it allows um, 
basically all of those servers, most notably surfing anonymously. Uh, it gives you uh, a choice of servers from any country in the world as well, which is also quite nice. And they are pretty fast. They are pretty fast. It's not too difficult to set up. In fact, they give you like configuration files that you can then import into your network manager applet. And it's about it's as simple as that. It's like you go into network manager, you do VPN um, add, and then there'll be an option to import a configuration file, which you'll receive from CyberGhost. And other details and then yeah uh, jobs are good um, so there is I believe there is a free option I haven't tried that out um, and many uh, VPNs also offer like a three-day trial which is also worth uh, using because if you're gonna you make pretty good savings when you buy a VPN with a yearly subscription rather than a monthly one so if you're going to commit to a yearly subscription see if the services either offer a free service or if they offer like a short time you know um, a, a small amount of money for a week's use just to try it out um, it's, it's worth using them and I'll, I'll be um, looking at a number of other companies another a number of other well-known VPNs I'm going to stick to some of the the, the big guys uh, just to make sure that there's you know accessibility uh, international accessibility and reliability and so forth as well so yeah troubling times indeed troubling times indeed because um, the biggest thing that concerns me is just the centralization of all of this data it is it is incredibly dangerous and it doesn't seem to be um you know and, and and it only seems to be getting worse which is a particularly big problem and of course now that the legislative fr basically the biggest problem with the investigatory powers bill is all of the incredibly dangerous precedents it says uh, it sets and how easy it seems that uh, how easy it seems to be able to take away our civil liberties nowadays. This isn't done in the name of counterterrorism. This isn't done off the back of a 9-11 style terrorist attack. This is just done. You know, it, it, to be honest, more people have probably just as easily been distracted from the, the election in the States right about now. Um, and that seems to have, have, you know, have done the trick. The Brexit campaign. Wow, wasn't that a convenient uh, event to bury bad news as well? Boy, I mean, if you think 2016 is bad, look under the surface. It gets a whole lot worse. Uh, so anyway, I apologize for such a negative video. Like I said, I've been trying out CyberGhost for a while, uh, a couple of days now, and they seem to be pretty reliable. You can get servers um, in just about any country um, that you can think of that would have servers. Um, and they're generally, you know, they're pretty good, pretty good. So that's about it for me today. Thanks again for watching. If you've got anything to add, please uh, leave your thoughts down in the comments section below. Uh, it's particularly important um, now because when we're talking about um, legal stuff and, uh, and and tech stuff as well, especially when I'm speaking off the hoof, mistakes can be made, so please feel free to correct me down in the comment section below. I'll link to all of these articles and a few extra extended reading uh, in the description as well. Uh, thank you very much for watching, um, and, um, and I'll see you in, uh, next time when I start making videos talking about uh, VPNs and other security measures. Toodaloo.